and welcome back to GSA. We now moved from Super Mario Odyssey back old school to SM64. We've got a race for you today between the one, the only Punkation, and of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Joe Random. I am Electric, and here again with me on CoComs is Badronus. Badronus, how are you doing today, 15 minutes after that SMO run? I'm still doing fine. That was actually a pretty exciting run. I thought there were some good moments in there, but it's back to good old SM64. Got one of the legends, Punk A, and Joe Random. I'm pretty impressed with how he's done this tournament, so this is going to be a good race to watch. Exactly. Joe Random's definitely proven himself to be a force to be reckoned with, but Punk A, I mean, he needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows his gameplay level, and he's definitely going to be a tough cookie to crack in this sort of race. Now, what type of strategy are you thinking that Joe Random's going to go for? Are you thinking he's going to go with what he's done the most, what he's most consistent at, or do you think he's going to try to pull out some insane stuff just to make up a little bit of extra time against this guy? I think, like, if you really wanted to beat Punky, you'd have to go for, like, all the strats and nail them. But I think Joe's probably going to go with what he's been doing the rest of this tournament and he's feeling confident with because he's been pretty consistent, and I don't think he'd want to change that. Just thing is, Punky is also really consistent. But like 49 consistent is not something many people in this world are capable of. So it's going to be tough. Exactly right. And I mean, with all the insane strats that are required to pull this run off at a level at 49, I mean, we could very well see some mistakes from Punky that could definitely swing this in Joe Random's favor. We've got the countdown behind the scenes and both our guys resetting and starting off their timers. We'll have them synced up in just a moment for you. And let's go ahead and see if they decide to, you know, make that little bribe to Lakitu for that good RNG, or if they decide to just skip right over the poor guy, not even giving him a thank you for all that hard camera work he's about to do. Yeah, lakitu has been pretty underappreciated in, his, in the entirety of the job. He's to have to do a lot of crazy things, some really ridiculous flying, but never really acknowledged. You know, Bowser just kind of put him out here to film Mario's demise, but like, you know, not really caring for Lakitu's feelings. He's probably really tired out. Exactly. And I mean, 49 minutes. You're dead right on that. I mean, you know something? Bowser talks about giving the power stars to all his minions, but Lakitu never gives you a star. So maybe he's the only other character in this game not on Bowser's side. But as we discussed a little bit last time, you know, who knows how many of these guys have been paid off by Princess Peach to make this kidnapping seem really legitimate? You know, with all that oil money, you can do anything. I've heard uh, a theory that, like, Toad is behind it, but there's like a lot of Toads in Mario 64, so that's probably not actually what's going on. See, I think Toad's playing both sides here, because he's got like, you know, I think it's a good three power stars, maybe even four. He's he's definitely got on Bowser's payroll. Yeah, no one really explains like how Toad got them anyway. It's just like, so you're saying you went in the stage and got them, or you like found it on the ground? What? Like, and... Toad not really giving up the answers. Funke, medium bomb. Got it. So random. What? Having a but that is strange. He got the bomb. Looks like he started getting I mean, the slide, but having to go ahead and get the bomb. I think what happened was he jumped. Okay, Joe Ram, not a good angle. Okay, he got a good angle. I think he jumped and then he like I he sort of like popped his balloon. He like he broke the bomb on like the top of the like slanted edge there. Oh uh, yeah, that's or sounds... he might have dropped it or something. Actually no, he didn't break it, he just dropped it. So I'm actually not sure what happened. But he probably could have even re-grabbed and tried to continue the bomb clip, but he decided to get another one. Both going for Womps 9. Funke with a bit of a lead, probably about 9 seconds. Yeah, not too substantial, but in a race against Punky, you really don't want to give him any sort of room. Now, chat, post your guesses. We got Punky with what I'm thinking I'm is going to be a nice 12. 12 oh, 12-9 oh, okay. from Punke. I'm thinking Joe Random will actually pull off a 12-7 in exchange. You know, maybe he's taking... Ooh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and say a 13-1 because that was a pretty interesting dismount. That's pretty close. Like going a little bit too far over to the right. Ooh, but oh. having troubles with grabbing the star. Finally gets it in his hands, and now we see both our guys going into Womp's Fortress where the big boys get proven as big boys. 
and where the little boys, you know, have a little bit of trouble. We'll see if Punke actually goes for texture setup, showing off his strats, or if he decides to play it safe, play it cool with that good old Punke is playing it safe here. Look at him go for this 100 point. He's not going for the row at the beginning. He's playing a very safe method of getting this fast cycle on time. Also, going for the jump dive. He's going to be so early for the cycle. Yeah, you know, I almost wonder like, if it would have been advantageous really to go ahead and go for that here. cycle. Yeah, but you never know what's going to happen when you try to do the beginning. So basically what Punky was doing is he's guaranteeing that he has all the time he needs to set up, you know, all the all the jumps, make sure he collects all the coins. And so far he's done that. So consistency coming out of Punky, definitely the name of the game. Let's only really give some like Joe Random a chance to surprise him. Because Joe Random already doing his Walms 100 coin, but... Even by matching Punkei's cycle, he's not really going to be able to beat what Punkei pulled off anyway. Exactly right. I mean, he both these guys getting a nice first cycle, but at the same time, Joe Random having a bit of trouble with those last few coins on that route. Bit of interesting camera work. You know, the way he was like uh, looking at Mario when he was getting the arrow was just really weird, and the rollout off of the off of the thwomp. But you know, no major mistakes from Joe Random. And plus, if you notice, he had to get kind of a strange angle on the return over the arrow because he missed a couple of the coins on the point. Yeah. Now, Punke going in for either Owlless or Cannonless. I'm Can thinking... Yep, that camera setup. Some people do kind of... three long jumps rather than the two jump fives. I'm not really sure. I think it's slower, but maybe it sets you up better for the actual positioning. Duran, I... turn the camera, the old Benny clip. Yep, and nice owlless from both of these guys. You know, the owl probably crying a little bit in his tree from the lack of attention, but what can you do? I mean, with... Uh, I mean, maybe he wants to be left alone. I was the nocturnal, and whenever you grab him, it's kind of broad daylight out. He's, you make him fly him all the way up to the top of the stage, you know, probably not the most comfortable for him. Yup, and a beautiful texture setup from Punkation. A little bit surprised he went for it, but executed flawlessly. Joe Random trying to match. I mean, texture setup gets a bit overblown, but just the the fact that you might not know if you're going to get it or not if you land on like kind of an, uh, a sketchy position is what makes it so scary. A lot of people just do this awkward setup instead because they just don't want to miss Kingless. But like, exactly right. you can still be very consistent with texture. No doubt. I mean, as these guys have proven time and time again. I mean, especially like someone like Cheese, I, I don't think I've seen him miss texture set up more than a small handful of times. But in a race situation like this, where you know that you can't just hit that reset button if it goes wrong, you know, that added pressure could definitely add a little bit of a, uh, just a little bit of an added element of uh, mistake prone. I'm just forgetting how English having works. a good wombs, so like, you know, Punk you might seem like he's extended his lead a bit. Not really. Joe Random has been pretty much neck and neck, or at least relative to what Punk has been doing, and he hasn't made any mistakes, so it's really impressive that, you know, in all these really problematic parts of Wombs, one of the most difficult and challenging stages in R64, Joe Random is off to a good start. Frame perfect dive. If you press B on the same frame that the one disappears and the star spawns, you can save one frame. Very nice piece of technical information there. And I mean, that dive beautifully executed. I think really the only thing that's giving Punk A a lead is that failed bomb clip from Joe Random earlier. He lost like a tenth of the second on the slide, but I mean, come on, that's not much. Punk A taking a bonk on top of the tower. Not too bad of a time loss, but you know, we know Punk A, he does have a bit of a tendency to start getting tilted on mistakes like that. So let's hope that's he's able to go ahead and reset it. Oh no, Joe Random, first mistake coming out of him since the bomb clip. Cannot Ooh, even get up to the elevator. Second. That's that's really sad, honestly. Just rolling out off of the elevator is just insult to injury there. Cause you it's not like you missed a triple jump, you know. You got it and then you fell off, and then you have to wait for the elevator again. So that would cost Joe Random like 10 to 15 seconds where he would have only been about 10 seconds behind Punk out of Womps. Like, Punky had, like, a perfect one tonight, don't get me wrong, like, that was, like, a 640, or 639, even, like, akin to, like, a 550 one eight. So, like, wow. no mistakes. Joe Random was, like, really good other than his missed bomb clip, but now it's not really so much a great run anymore. 
Yep, and we saw Punk K making up that earlier slide mistake. Not sure why Joe Random ends up on the right side of that dismount every time. I mean, that's what's causing him to get those over 13s. Punk K with this beautiful flying and wing cap stage, getting the, twin, getting the twins handily and getting nice arcs all the way through. That's the type of flying you want to see. And not really going for a fast switch movement, but very clean. It always kind of scares me that little ending of that specific switch movement because it really looks like you don't get the star, but they're just barely clipping into it. Joe Random with that nice twins grab. Some good arcs of his own, not going for the straight angles we've seen from a lot of players. Playing it a little going safe, but... Yeah, it's a little bit safer his, than Punk A, but... Speedy arcs. We've seen some guys that, like, just deep before those coins, they'll go ahead and straighten out, and it'll cost them a lot of time. That was a pretty crazy slur grab from Joe Random. Like, he hit the switch at an angle, but somehow he managed to grab with the dive anyway. Now Punk is in Dark World, a death in Dark World could change everything for him. He's got to go for Shig. Very nice, like, slow kick. It's like, kind of a speed kick that he did, but by holding neutral a lot longer after he did the kick, you know, you just get that very tiny jump in place letting you do a triple up there for Shake. I think it's a very useful piece of movement. Exactly, and very nicely done Shig from Punk A. So no random mistakes. Accidental ground pound, which... Oh, second one. Okay. Now, Joe Random can still make Shig because... The elevators operate on a cycle where he'll just make the next one. Like, the Shig elevator that Punky gets is gonna be one before the one that Joe gets here. Okay, Joe Random though, ruining his chances. Yeah, attempting to go for yeah. like the Zaya cycle type strat of going kind of under the elevator, but not quite getting enough height on that second elevator platform and bonking. Probably gonna be a late cycle. Uh, going ahead and going for the cheese block. Cycle. Cycle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Ooh, please don't die. Okay, Joe Random, back to safety, and gets the last grab. Okay, so Joe Random, you know, at least he's not taking a death in Dark World, but those two ground pounds plus that elevator mistake definitely costing him, as we see Funke already done with the Bowser fight before Joe Random can even hit that fight. Better Dark World than I've ever uh, gotten as a split time, like, exactly. by a decent margin. Yeah. You know, we like commentators seem to be pretty. We commentators seem to be pretty critical of these guys sometimes, but we also have to note that I could never do this at the moment. I'd have to do a lot more practice before I'd even. Do random, random like a three spin Bowser throw. Yeah, Punky going for Sky Jump here. I actually like haven't had anything to criticize Punky over at all. He's been just chugging along. Exactly. I mean, this super clean movement, playing a tad safe, not trying to pull out any of the insane stuff like Island Hop. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to at this point in the race. Or at this point in the tournament, rather. Yeah, like, the only thing I could criticize him for is, like, not going for his eye cycle or, like, pro 100 point, but, like, what, 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 like, that's nothing, you know? Exactly. I mean, that's, those are things that, if he did do them, we'd kind of be a bit iffy on that, too. I mean, Punk A just cannot win with this commentator. You know, if you if you do the easy strats, they're going to criticize you for doing easy stuff. If you do the hard stuff, we're going to be like, why are you going for that? You've already got a substantial lead. Yeah, I guess so. Wolf is coming off from Punk A. Joe Random sliding down, not having a great sky jump. He missed that wing cap box and then just having troubles with that slope. Let's hope the actual jump goes well, at least. And Wolf kicks perfect. do work for Punk A, unsurprisingly. Yeah, not perfect from Punk A, but it was like, probably like a 9-5, not bad. Joe okay. Random finishing up Sky Jump. Uh, what was his mistake? Did he just slide down the hill accidentally? Yeah, and he uh, did miss the first opportunity to get that uh, wing cap box. He accidentally went, I think, too far behind it. Okay. Now Punkation, you know, making that penguin a little bit nauseous, and it's it's a little bit bad. I mean, why is Mario just leaving this penguin that may very well vomit at any moment just right down there with his mother? I mean, now the mother's <laughs> gonna have to deal with it. Mario, you definitely know, not the great guy we all know him as. I want to point out, like, one of the, you know, the less obvious version differences is with the penguin star. In Japanese version, it spawns directly in the middle of the pool, so, like, above the mom penguin's head, where in English, it spawns a bit off to the side. But that actually affects where you want to land with the penguin. On English, you want to land at the near side and kind of, like, uh, wedge yourself into the kind of, like, shallow part of the pool. Oh, did you see that from Joe Random? What do you do? He was trying to go for the little penguin and ended up taking a bonk and instead going right into the slide, but <laughs> recovering pretty nicely, you know, just going ahead and getting done with his slip sliding away. 
Meanwhile, yep. Punke going into that Penguin race, he it looks like he missed one of those on that arc, so he's not going to be able to miss any more. I don't believe he grabbed the safety red. Yeah, probably not. He's going for CCM 17. Well, uh, since he's doing the Penguin... Oh, wait. Yeah, there's no Penguin on that. That's... Why would yeah. Pen... Why would Punky... Is Punky going for double pillow this year? I, that must be the case. I don't really know if that's a good idea, but I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I don't see any other reason he'd be going for CCM 17. That'd just be kind of ridiculous. I mean, giving up HMC late at his level of gameplay, I'd be honestly shocked. So Joe Random is going to race the Penguin now, but he's saving the little Penguin for last, I guess, because yeah, that's he what it looks like. Way on its own. I wonder, like, you saying I'll save for Joe Random? If he like forgets to get the Penguin, that would be kind of bad. Because like oh. you could kind of get in the mindset of like, oh yeah, this is like the last star of the stage, and he can kind of forget he got the the, he or he'll forget he didn't get the baby Penguin. So hopefully he doesn't. Yeah, I'm Missing definitely a coin hoping there, but he's good. He got a safety red as well, so. And that line is a hard one to get all of because I mean it's at a specific slant. Ooh, okay, that safety red definitely coming in handy, coming in clutch. He's able to miss three total on this slide. Yeah, he missed the two intentionally at the end. Joe random with the firsty. <laughs> okay, pretty solid. Oh, Punke, the Boo is not playing his games. He's gonna and have to. Furiously kick until the boo finally vanishes and he yields the star. Ooh, and Joram taking another punk is trying to get that penguin star, and I think it really says something about Punk's play that this is really his first big mistake, and it's not even that big. Yeah, probably. Everything else has been completely solid. And you know, I've started wondering that big boo does the same exact grunt as the big daddy Womp. Is he potentially the ghost of the Womp that we've already killed? Wait, does he? I, I didn't yeah. think he made the same noise. Listen to it uh, whenever Joe Random comes up to him. It's like the... Okay. I'll take your word for it. I mean, could very well be Mario just adding insult to injury by killing the ghost of the Womp he already killed. Mario, you know, may be closer to Shara than to uh, Frisk in this type of role. And Punkin going down to basin with 19, so what he does in SSL will definitely tell us what kind of route he wants to go for. Because if he only does one plus, he'll do HMC early and get some other stars upstairs, but double plus, he'd be going ham. Oh, definitely. I could see it. If anyone's consistent enough plus, it's going to be Punkin. I mean, maybe not the, you know, well, he's not a big 16 star runner, but he's been at it so long that he's got that consistency. Well, he's also going for Tomba Plus, the, the fastest version of the strat, so it's not as consistent as probably the normal method for him is, but he goes for it anyway because he's got to save those seconds. Let's see what he's got. Big bomb. Ooh, no but letting go of it a bit too early. Yeah, I to... forgot to get Tomba on the line, tell him what he did wrong, what he's got to do to fix it. But uh, yeah, Pumpkin just going to back it up with trying to top the pyramid. Yeah, and because of how slow he was getting out of that uh, sand whirlpool, basically, he had to go for that as the backup. Couldn't really rely on the Klepto cycle at all. Yeah, like, at that point, if you want to go for him, you just go to the pillar that he'll end up at, but... Not opting. Go we'll grab Talons. Right, let's this see looks like a... Oh, Punkay! Uh, skimping on his Tomaplast, going to do the tried and true classic method. And it works out for him. So you can definitely see Punk A, you know, he thought he was going to try to pull out all the stops here. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to do what I, I know will work. Exactly. And I mean, that was such a clean plus. Not having any issues clipping into the top of the pyramid with that bomb. And I believe that was a medium bomb, right? That was a big bomb. Oh, okay. Commentator, not exactly able to differentiate size. Size doesn't matter. It's how you use the bomb that truly matters here. Couldn't agree more. And now, Punk going for that Klepto Star now. So, if he's going for double plus, he's doing that second plus last, which I really can't see. So, must be doing HMC early. Kind of an interesting route decision. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. Going to Lethal Lava Land, we'll confirm it. No double plus. Joe that's Random, what's he got? Big Bomb. 
okay. Pretty fast. Okay. Can you get over the hump? Yep. Nowhere near that box. Now all he's got is the Alright, he's got to adjust his direction. And he's in. There he goes. Nice. And that's the only one he's got to do since he did CCM 18. So already making up a fair bit of time over Punke. And unfortunately, due to the route Punke is going to be taking, we're not really going to be able to see where exactly these guys are in relation to each other until Tippy. Yeah, it's going to be a long way away. We'll kind of have to judge that the mistakes that they may make in the meantime. So Random's been pretty solid, you know, he fell off the porches, but he hasn't really made any other big mistakes. Exactly right, I mean, getting a very nice uh, klepto cycle, you know, it's, it, the bird's name is Talon here, but after running SMO for a little bit, I can't help but call him klepto. I thought it was called klepto. I mean, that's what I thought, and I mean, when you look at the name of the star, it's in the talons of the big bird, not in the talons of talons, so... But a lot of people call it the talon star... Oh, commentator having that epiphany that they call it the talon star, not because the bird is named talon, but that's because it's part of the name. Yes. <laughs> and while this is going on... Oh, yeah, like like, wait, boost. in the talons are the talons? I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, electric coming up into the light. You know, he's had his dark night of confusion, but all the clearer in the morning. So random, he's gonna burn. Okay, he nearly did not burn. I thought he was going to, just the way he had his angle set up. Burn for the big bully, not able to skip the ledge grab. Maybe he was intending that, but... Either way, not the outcome. Punky, Punky invisible diving. ceiling, barely landing back on the elevator. Now, will he watch out for the fire cycle? Yes, he does. Uh, if you remember, like, Kopitz did not watch out for the fire cycle, and that caused him to die. Yep, and getting a nice roll out there so that he didn't accidentally fall down to the bottom of the stage. I mean, that would have been exceptionally rough. Already hemorrhaging a couple of seconds due to that fall, and yeah, that invis feeling is rough. I, I'm shocked. It looked almost as if he just took the dive early, but I think you're right that there was something else going on there with the physics of this game. Yeah, there's some invisible wall or ceiling there. Joe Random, too high of a ground pound. Gonna have to kick the bully off of the other edge. A bit of unconventional improvisation from Joe Random, but missing the side flip. Gonna have to do a backup kill on the big bully. And missing the start. So, not great, but, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Exactly right on there. And, I mean, Punke... Threw a little bit of seconds on the ground, but definitely not something that Joe Random can't make up for at some point. Now Punky going ahead and going for uh, the other bully star now. He's done with his red coins, done with the inside of the volcano, thankfully. Let's see if the bullies decide to treat him any better. You know, let's see if Punky at one point had Back. enough. Ooh, but that, missing two. Uh, yeah, when you go for the ground pound, at least me personally, I've accidentally backflipped a few times and. You just kind of can't really do anything about it while you're in the air. Okay, wrapping up Lethal Lava Lane, though. Yep, and we see now... Punky is going to be leaving LLL, moving on to HMC, and... You know, even though Punky is definitely well-practiced at this stage, I would not be surprised if we saw a couple of errors that could really swing this more in Joe Raymond's favor. Getting a ledge grab on that panel, and now he's entering his own volcano. Going for this elevator star. Let's see if he can make up time over Punke. And he does. Nice triple jump dive. Not even having to worry about the fire bar. There he goes. Beautiful Good elevator star. Go random. It's been very consistent in this game. No doubt about that. And with the mistakes Punke made Ooh. with those bullies, I think Joe Random's going to save a little bit of time at least. Punke's doing Toxic Maze. You don't see that very often in 70 star. Especially because people would go for SL Reds instead, but... You know, Punk A feeling pretty good about this Toxic Maze, I guess. You know, you gotta do it in one point anyway. But he does the BLJ, so it's not like he would even be doing the same strat. Pretty interesting from Punk A, kind of having to dig through his veteran playbook to figure out what strat he exactly needs to do. Kind of like with old Pillar List, but, you know, I guess he's just so used to him that he can pull him off anyway. Even if he hasn't practiced them in a very long time. Yep, and I mean, for those of our viewers who aren't Durant, aware... taking a burn. Ouch, just barely missing that platform there, but... Yeah, bad camera work from Joe Rain, and we can definitely get better set up at the beginning. And he's having to deal with some pretty unfortunate uh, panels at first on those reds, but overall overcomes. And uh, for the uh, for those who don't know, um, 70 star BLJ is totally banned. Not just the BLJs up the stairs to get to Tippy, but all BLJs are banned. 
Yeah, I've heard people say that, like, consider changing the rules, but as far as it is now, it stands that no BLJ is permitted anywhere in the run or you'll be disqualified. So if, H if Funke did HMC BLJ, even if he got it, you know, he that would probably be a forfeit. Exactly. And we have seen a couple of players jokingly go for them on that endless staircase after getting their 70, but if one of them did actually get it, that would potentially cause a dis- Yeah, I'm not sure, like, the GSA ruling, if they'd, like, have some other way around it, but as far as we know, you know, it's not allowed. Yep, and I mean, it's something that all these top Oh wait, Joe Random, I want to point out, he went to HMC instead of going to Dire Dire Dock, so I think he's actually planning to do, H to do CCM 17 and HMC early, but because he accidentally landed in the chimney, he just did CCM 18 instead. Interesting, yeah, that... So we are seeing the same route from both of them. Missing Christmas Miracle. So that's pretty interesting, although Joe Random's not going to have to worry about the Toxic Maze but I, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, if you get CCM18, I see the big reason I'm such a huge supporter of HMC late is not that one second save, but it's because it gives you kind of a reprieve before you go into Tippy. It's definitely a calm before the storm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's for, for him to just kind of give that up, even though it was basically handed it to him. You know, I, I, I'm not sure I totally support that. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it plays out. Punk in the meanwhile is already done with HMC, but Joe Random only two stars behind. And we do hear on Madronus's mic the speed police deciding to ramp the up their speed activity. Speed police are back. Yep, I mean they waited for a little while. Punkation, as we see the speed police already taking their effect. You know, he took a little bit of a momentum loss on that corner. They're not quite a bonk, but still. And if you're a speed detective, you could check out our sponsor, Vi.gg. Put your knowledge to the test and betting on Super Mario 64, Super Mario Odyssey, and Super Metroid matches. Ha! Huh. Okay. Um, exactly. You'll see 18 or over, and in a country where it's legal, so like, the US and, at least for now, the UK are on the list of countries where you cannot participate in Vi.gg from. But if it is legal for you, consider checking them out. PvP betting, so you'll be playing with other people, and you might have a good time. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a great way to bring up the excitement of these races, even in something like DDD, which is typically a bit slow. You know, you're watching all of the optimal swimming. You're watching for exactly how they manage to do front or rear sub. And, and to make angry Twitter threats to the Manta when it screws your, your run over. Exactly. And I mean, uh, with regard to the UK specifically, Vi is actually in the process of applying for the specific license they need to yeah. operate there. So if you're in the UK, be sure to check back pretty regularly to see if you get added to that list. And if you're in the US, you know the drill. Call your senator, write your congressman, and, you know, maybe try to get uh, online sports betting back into the legal zone. Dear Mr. Congressman, I like watching Super Mario 64, and I want to put my money on games, but I can't because you're stupid laws, and I want you to change them. Sincerely, Badronus. I mean, I, I think that's an appropriate letter, but Joe Random not with the appropriate turnaround on that chest, just barely missing that front grab. Meanwhile, Punke with that very nice, looked like a front sub. Anyway, Punke and Fire Cena. Oh, wait, Manta still. Yep, he's, he's got to let the Manta kind of do what it will, decide whether or not he's going to have a good time. Uh, Punky's going to take this Manta by the horns. And now we see the majestic Italian plumber swimming seamlessly through these rings, hunting the star, peacefully allowing the Manta to swim on. While on Joe Random's side, we see nice swimming going up to the submarine in this water level. And now Punke in the fire seat. Let's that was see great. What he's able to get. You think so? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad. Thanks. Well, it's time to get a hard point. He's in fire seat. <laughs> Can he get it done? Punke Jones. He's on great pace so far. He's nice. Into the round. wall kick. Double jumps. Okay, great wall kicks there. Uh, he's see, still firm. So that side clip is just what he needed. He's on pace for it right now. As long as he doesn't get hit by the boy. This is a good lava boost. Punk A very early as well. Great execution in the fire seat right now. Can he get the ending? 
that he's looking for. I mean, that was a beautiful lava boost. If you saw, he actually kind of floated. Ooh, Ooh taking the zap, though. Ruining his plans would not be able to catch the fast cycle at the ending. Will he be able to get this kind of crescent long jump? Yeah, he will. So pretty good backup from Punke. Joe Random having a bit of trouble with the Manta. Uh, I don't know if you, if you were not going to be watching Punke, but not too bad from Joe Random. Okay, wrapping up piracy, Joe Random will have to, to try to match that lava boost. Or at least get an early cycle. Yup, and I mean, Punke almost, I, I mean, with how well he executed the intro of the stage, oh, I wonder- Oh, Joe Random, bomb! Oh no, that- That's kill an early cycle. It's not that big of a deal if you, like, wouldn't have gotten an early cycle anyway, but, yeah. I mean, with okay, Punke getting you. lava boost in early Ellie's, that's definitely not the type of thing you want to see at the very start of Fire Seed in the last yeah. And, uh, so it's just going to be a normal cycle from Joe Random. You can kind of see the way he's approaching it now. He's not trying to do these fast roll outs over the cage and do these very risky things. Uh, okay, but that's a bit of a mistake. Double Goomba bounce. So he's right. going to have to go ahead and so go ahead and take that. Not even like early for normal anymore. He's probably going to have to do the long jump. Okay. Oh no! He's having to do normal cycle lava boost here. Okay. That was a bit scary. You know, I don't see it very often but you know there's a, a chance that he could have been late to the normal cycle we tried the long jump directly to the platform that you would want to land on oh, yeah. joe random avoiding the lava <laughs> that was pretty funny yeah but costing a bit of time and of course getting that bad ending as a result but he slapped the heart so at least he's not losing a whole lot of health to it but not a great fire seed from joe random and definitely not just what he needed at the moment yeah pony starting off with gyro with these chip jump wall kicks See, a lot of people actually do it over the 100 point just because I guess these are much scary. You want to get them out of the way. Good wall kick angle from Punk A. And that'll get him. Oh, Ooh, no, but, but he missed the last one. Okay, so he's to... still able to get on the platform at least. And that last one can be deceptively hard since you now have to deal with that ceiling. So now Punk A going back in. Probably going to be going for the uh, 100 coin route, but could also see the top of the town star from him. Joe Random, also a big fan of excessive spinning. He probably spun Bowser like three times to hit that throw. So Punke going ahead and going for this star over uh, Shocking Aerolifts, I believe it's called. Yeah. And just completely violating every bit of intended strategy. And I mean, that's, you know, if you know that that platform's there, that's something you can very easily do casually as well. Or sorry, that uh, teleport. Yeah, Punky now going for top of the town. It's a bit of a weird order. Like, you did the elevators. Okay, you want to do triple the walks first? No, I want to get Shot and Arrow Lifts next. The easiest start in the stage. It's like, okay. And then what? Oh, then I'll do top of the town. Okay. And then 100 coin? Yes. It's like, okay. It's almost like he's got a hat for each stage, and he's just pulling papers out to decide his star order. Could very well be. Maybe he has like a like an anime fortune teller book and like you know <laughs> pull a slip of paper out of a suggestive location to tell him what star to do. Commentator cannot contain his laughter. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Punky's got that wife who knows. Can't go a Punky race without mentioning his anime. Um, I don't know what you say. His anime aficionado, that is Punky. Yeah, I caught that word you were about to say, though, and I, I, I don't know if that's totally wrong. <laughs> now, let's see, Punke, though, regardless of his preferences for animated girls, is getting a very clean 100 coin throughout HMC so far. Or, sorry, through Wet Dry World. Don't even know where yeah. that mistake came from. I mean, I mean it's I'm not like... hazy. <laughs> yeah, I was... We probably could have gone a bit farther, but I think I'll just get back on topic here. Punke, back to the animated red man. Grabbing the chuck here. Got enough coins if... Okay, that one... If that fell off, he would have been in a bit of trouble with how to get the backup box, but... All good. Yep, uh, see speed random... police backing up. Yep, I mean, you know, they gotta get in that perfect position to catch these guys, because they're just blazing by, but... Joe Random, we saw, had a little bit of trouble with that very last line in the 100 coin, and kind of interesting how he decided to do that first while Punke did it last, so, you know, a little bit of sort of sync there, but Punke going onto Tiny Huge Island now. 
Now, I, I wonder, does it save time, instead of doing TTC 100 with Stomp on the Flomp, does it save time to do THI Reds and uh, Toxic Maze? You mean instead of TTC 100? And not only TTC 100, but also skipping uh, Stomp on the Flomp standalone. No, it's a whole lot slower. Probably oh. by about... Wait, you said Toxic Maze and THI Reds? Yeah. That'd be like 30 seconds slower, ideally. Um, TDC 100, like, if you're, like, absolutely insane, like, I would say ideal run, uh, TDC 100 is, like, 58 seconds. Okay, no one will ever get near that, but they might be able to get, like, a 105. Um, Toxic Maze is, uh, about 30, maybe a bit less, like, 28. I don't actually remember. I think it's 28, ideally. Uh, Punky Mountain Clip, not successful. Um, I just go yeah. around that little walk of shame on the plank. THI Red is like, like 27 flat, maybe like a high 26. So like, you got like 50 plus, eh, it, not 30, probably about 20 seconds slower. Yeah, because you do have to consider the castle movement, and it's the big problem with THI Reds is having to go into the big painting. Yeah, as well. But yeah, either way, not faster. TC100 is a pretty quick thing if you're good at it. Oh yeah, and Punk has certainly got that expertise, and uh, of course I, I did also kind of forget that with CCM17 you do have to get one of those extra stars later on, so that's yeah, what Toxic guess... Maze fulfills rather than skipping TTC100. Yeah, you know, usually people do some insane reds, but Toxic Maze might have been better for Punk A. Yeah, because if he's not super great with the shell movement, then that could have been a point of contention. Ooh, uh, still running him with decent secrets. Not like the most optimal, but like he's very uh, quick on his feet here to avoid making any big mistakes. Yep, and I mean, being this close to Punk A at this time, I mean, that's that's a big deal. And especially yeah, with the fact that they're on similar routes. Really impressing me here. Cause like, I haven't even seen much from Punk A, like, I guess maybe falling off the elevator, but like, not really many things for me to be like, Oh my god, Punk A! Slipping up! You know, like, it's like, he's on a solid run, and he's just been keeping the train moving. Reese's attack from Punk A should successfully as well. Oh man, that was beautiful. Not even um, like... So random, not that. really knowing where to get these pranas. Been interesting. Alright. And yep, he's having trouble getting that last one to spawn. Uh, like we kind of figured out a while back, uh, you actually have to be looking at their spawn location when you get close enough for them to spawn. If Mario's looking away, they will not spawn. Yeah. So that's kind of um, a weird like little quirk. Punk A with that nice log kick and mountain clip. So it's also a great start in TTM, but can he maintain this momentum? Really nice wall kick as well. You know, a lot of times you'll see someone have to do the, the second one as a backup, but Punk A definitely controlling his momentum to grab the ledge the first time around. Geranium coming up to the tip top of the huge island. Gonna try to get around the Chukya, but he's too aware. Geranium giving the toss. At uh, the very least, the Chukya either. decided to be kind of conservative. Now, it's, if Probably I remember not right. also using Mario Cam either. You see people do Mario Cam. Geranium, I like him do like all of THI and like lock 2C down. This is pretty weird to see. Kind of an interesting move. Definitely changes the stick angles, but you know, maybe he's just so used to those that it's just more comfortable for him. Yeah. But uh I, I do remember now reading somewhere that the Chucky's throw distance directly depends on how exactly you tilt the stick while he's holding you. Oh really? Yeah, like if you if you tilt it, I believe, towards like the inside of his throw, it'll be a lot shorter, and if you tilt it toward the outside, it'll be a lot harder, if I remember right. Okay. I know uh, Panoin did a video on it. Uh, I think it's on his uncommentated channel. Here we go. I'll have to check it out then. So Punk A with a nice box jump here. I mean, he's not leaving a whole lot behind in THM, that's In the that's rare for case sure. that I do get a big fat purple hug. Oh, Joe Random missing his first log wall kick here. Oh no, and that slide he's down. Back up with the box. Okay, good camera setup. This will work with the kind of ricochet off the back wall into the star. Funky Shin in the meanwhile, going in the meantime, he's going for these red coins. Big old long jump. Uh, these dives are pretty scary, but he makes it through right now. Can he get a clean maze? Side flip wall kick coming out from Punky, and it's good. Really clean. Couldn't say, couldn't do it better myself. Nice final jump down to that star. We've seen some people before, they'll actually miss the eighth red, but not realize it before doing that long jump, and they'll have to climb all the way back up that wall. Yeah. So, Punky moving on to Snowman's Land, you know, 
SSL, but without some of the sand. Maybe they they bleach the sand. Who knows? Maybe. Punky, trying to give people like I don't know. It's very bright snow. At least when you enter the stage, it seems a bit more normal now. But like the initial camera was like super blinding. So random missing a mountain clip here. TTM not been going very well for him. I have to go for red coins. Yeah, I mean, for, for the viewers who don't know, uh, it may look like Mountain Clip is just hitting a specific part of the mountain, but it's a bit more than that. You have to hit a specific part of the mountain and then execute a rollout on a proper uh, timing so that uh, Mario's hitbox interacts on a strange way with the mountainside and so pushes him right through. Imagine yeah. Mario's hitbox is like a rectangle around him. When he does that rollout, it puts more of the rectangle behind the wall than in front of him. I wouldn't say it's like, it's not difficult, but like, that's a good explanation. Basically, it is just about the amount of speed you have with Mario. You need to be able to dive. If you don't have enough speed, like, to rain them, you'll just kind of do... Uh, or like, you actually have to be facing into the mountain. So like, you know, Duranum dive too early was probably his issue before he was actually turned enough. And that can also be it. Or like, most commonly, you'll just see people not have enough speed. Yep, now Punky going ahead for this star in a box over here. We've seen some people have a bit of trouble with these slopes. I mean, these aren't slopes that Mario's meant to do any sort of walking on, so you gotta do some pretty nice kicks. Good nice cross home into the side of the box, too. Very um, good positioning. Punky also doing an early Mario cam to can give him the right angle. Now, Joe Random going ahead and going for that Breeze. Probably not too confident in Breezeless, and I don't blame him. It is a difficult strat. Yeah, it's even a surprise for Punky to go for Breezeless, and, like, we all know how good he is. Or, like, not a surprise, but, like, you know, it's still something that, like, you know, you wouldn't blame him if he just left it out. It's like, yeah, it's not really worth it. I don't need it. Punky, yeah, I also need for Snowman's Lane Red, so I'm not really sure what kind of star order he needed here. I don't think he needed SL Red with Pops Maze. No, he didn't. This is very odd. I don't know why he'd be leaving out TTC 100. Like, I, I already kind of have issues with people doing uh, Stump on the Flump without uh, 100 coin, but to see someone at his level do it just does not make sense. We'll see what he actually does when he gets up to Tippy. Um, wait a minute. Okay, Punk is not even going to get chill with uh, the bully. Did he get chill with the bully? I don't. I didn't see him do the bully. I think he missed. I don't think like. Well, I'm trying to see. I don't think he. What is Joran doing? Casual deep freeze strat. <laughs> what? Joran is having a bit of fun. I I think maybe he meant to do that just to like, you know, play around a little bit. Punk and glitchy walking. Lack to bounce. Not successfully got the glitchy walking, but not the side flip. Um. Yeah, that would have been kind of crazy. Yeah, I just I need to go back and check. Hold on, actually, let me. Go oh no, Punky falling right down now. the maze. Oh man. Yeah, I'm not thinking that Punky got that bully star because he's got to get four in a rainbow ride right now. So maybe he. No, actually, I think he did get all the all the stars in some of them. He got the bully, but I don't know what he left out in that case. I'm just a bit confused. It's not a typical star order that I'm used to. Yeah, no doubt. ask him after the race. Very interesting routing from Punk A. Definitely need to keep that on our minds to ask him. That's this has been unusual. Glitchy wall kick second try. Side flip. Then Alex is really good lack to bounce right where he wants it to be. And grabs the pole. Now can he clutch out the ending with the wall kicks? No! Oh no! Falling Ooh. straight to the bottom of the stage. This is okay. exactly what Joe Random needs. The angle was fine. He just missed the A press, and uh, now he's stuck to getting tricky triangles. And right side to boot. I mean, most of the guys at Punk A's level will go ahead and do left side tricky triangles, but he just can't at this point. He doesn't have a good setup. Here we go. Yeah. Kind of out of backups here. You're not really going to see him go for a swing on the breeze. Well, you could. Like, you know, Punk A... Rocking the new swing on the breeze optimization where you actually do the tricky triangles beginning, but he needs his cruiser star first. Yep. I'm opting for an older lag tube bounce. We've seen Punky do this with plus as well, even though it's not even the glitchy wall kick that's been giving him trouble. Yeah, that lag tube get the wall not cooperating. He's going for swinging in the breeze now. You'll see him kind of do uh, what he would be doing otherwise. 
Uh, yeah, okay, he's gonna go for the triple jump off the flame shooter. Good decision. That uh, spring cycle is not in a very conducive position for a long jump. But yeah, Punk A, he's out of backups. He needs lock two bounds, and he needs it now. Yep, I wonder if he'll even try to just go for the uh, more beginner strat going all the way over into the maze. I doubt it, but who knows? He'll still go for lock two bounds, but if he misses it, then I'm sure that's what he'll do. I mean, he's given Joe Random exactly what he needs. Let's see if he can capitalize on yeah, it. Yeah, good wall kick from Punk A. Now, if I had to guess, he'll actually kind of play it safe on the on the double wall kick. He might just kind of go for the ledge grab. He doesn't want to fall down again. No, Punk A wants to redeem himself. Okay, very scary here doing the backup. Good long jump, and he gets a star. So, a lot of... Like, there's some big spaghetti jobs from Punk A and Rainbow Ride, but he kind of held it together, you know, only just. Maybe using that spaghetti to tie some knots to keep things from drifting apart. And what is Punk A doing, talking to Toad before TTC? I mean, it does... It doesn't lose that much time, but why? It doesn't Seems make sense. a bit sense. ancient, like, talking Maze, SL Reds, Toad before TTC. Uh, it's like a very, like, 2015 kind of route. Very interesting routing decisions from Punk. So random, not even, uh, I think he missed like two downs actually. He's going for the kind of safe backup. A long jump will get him the ledge grab. Oh, okay. So random slipping up. He needs to get up. And he does. Okay. Able to execute that long jump. So three stars behind, but as we've seen time and time again, big mistakes in TTC could very well give him this race. Uh, 100 point is absolutely huge for Punk A. Probably the biggest obstacle standing between him and a victory over Joe Random to move on to face Cheese. You know, obviously the second round Clash of the Titans that they seem to make, they seem to meet in every tournament. But you know, Cheese maybe not feeling the best right now. But we'll see if Punk A can. Ooh, actually up. missed getting invisible there. Okay. Not a bad invisible, but it's still an invisible nonetheless, costing a few seconds. All right, Punky at least gonna wrap it up. The random probably saving a little bit of time in Rainbow Ride if I had to guess because Punky had some pretty big spills, but he's still in the lead by a full TDC 100 and Toad, but. Mostly just the 100 point that uh, Geranum, it's not a given that he'll pull it off either. Yup, but Punky does still have some relatively difficult starts in TTC, and I have to imagine that he's at least a bit tilted at this point. I also want to say Geranum's on like a low 51 pace, potentially. Like, this is a good run for him. I don't know what his PD is, but this is a good run. I'm sure he has some sort of sub 50, but as a race time, that is. I don't think he has sub 50. Really? I'm gonna check real quick. Usually I pull this information up, but it's kind of on the fly. Yeah, uh, shout out to Badronist for stepping up for CoComs. <laughs> uh, the CoCom spot was empty, and he just decided, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and fill in. I got you. I got you. Joe Random has a 51 to date. He is on PB pace right now. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Wonder if he's feeling that heat. Wonder if he's got his splits open and looking at him. So Punky's rolling into that cage. He's already got the pit and the pendulums. Now all he's got left are his reds and I believe get a hand. Could be the time jumps on moving bars. Commentator, you know, having a couple issues when they're both in TTC, it's hard to watch both and really catch all the action. Okay, with a good get a hand. Nearly missing the kind of cog in the middle. If you do land on it, you'll kind of slide and you'll fail to start. Not that he would actually miss it, but it is a possibility. Joe Random here finishing up his 100 coin. PB is definitely on the mind of Joe Random right now. It's not really about Punk A. It's about can he beat his personal best? Exactly right. Now Punk A, okay, he actually must have done red. Okay, he must have done reds earlier then. No. He got towed before TTC. Oh, set up with his 70th. Commentator, forgetting about Punk A's odd route choices just because it Joe came Random, out of nowhere. Though, being a Reds, he's going for that right after uh, TTC 100. So, pretty interesting decision. Not sure if I agree. I mean, but... it's, if you're going to go ahead and do the time stop ones, uh, time jumps on moving bars isn't the best backup in the world. So, I, it, I'll allow it. It makes sense. Okay, going for the triple jump, not actually getting a triple jump though, normal speed. 
getting it. Okay, Punk A wants to get a triple jump regardless, so he's just gonna pull off on the next level. Now, Punk A right now is still on 49 pace, and I was saying, like, he can consistently get 49s, and he might be on pace to do the same right now. Drew Random playing it pretty safe on this way up to the, uh, looks like he's doing time jumps on moving bars. Yep, go ahead and taking care of both the time stops. Not a bad idea. Uh, it could be a bad idea. I don't like not having any backups for time moving. Like, obviously, if you die, you can do the time moving stars on time stop, but it's a little bit less optimal. And Well, he does still have get a hand and roll into the cage, so those are good backups for us. Uh, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, you do have to do, you just stuck to the time moving ones. Like, if you die, it is... Oh, Joe Random, see, this is what I'm talking about. He's going to have to get it without the choke jump wall kick, right? So that's what you'd be doing normally if you missed it. But if you die, you know, it's better to enter the clock at time stop, which means oh, it's more I conducive see. to get a start like time jumps on moving bars rather than do like one of the cage of time stop because the difference is like a bit more because you have like the two and a half seconds to wait for the hand and then you have the actual like two second star difference. So it's a bit worse. Punky meanwhile had a really clean bits like mid 49 pace right now. Yeah, that is just beautiful. I oh, think man. he got moving left side. Yep, he did. Just absolute beautiful execution. Oh. So we're in the song jump. Okay, first throw is good. Two more. This could be sub 49 30. Okay, second throw is good. You gotta be feeling at least a bit of that pressure. Well, Joe Random collecting his last stage star. What a spin. Punky with the one spin to close it out. Getting a 49, like, 28 in a race against Joe Random. You know, yeah. Punky's really been coming out to play in all these BSA tournaments lately. I've been... Oh, Joe Random with the bonk! He's falling down! That might have killed oh, his PB no. chance. Did I think... I think it did. Uh... Yeah, I think that killed it. That's definitely unfortunate for Joe Random. Punky, I mean, beautiful time, 49.30. And with some of the mistakes that he's made too, and I mean, honestly, most of the run was super clean. There were just a couple of small errors, had some trouble with that uh, lack of two bounce, but overall just great execution from him today. Joe Random, barely not on PV pace anymore. Probably gonna get a 52. And now we have Punkation in the call for a quick post-race interview. Punk, how are you feeling after that race? Um, I'm feeling all right. I was, 52. I was once again. And now um, we have Punkation in the call. Third race in a row where I was 48 pace going into Tippy, and as usual, I got like a bad Tippy. Um, our Rainbow Riot just like destroyed me. I guess like I, I, it was just. Glitchy wall kick. I, I've not gotten that first try in any of these races yet. Thing and... is, you even had the glitchy wall kick every single time. Just like the one time you're doing the double wall kick because you just missed the A press and fell all the way down was super unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, that usually in these races, I get glitchy wall kick second try, which I did. And I just like, I just didn't press A, which is like a super silly mistake, but it's like, it's happened very often to me. Um, but I, I just like kept on screwing that star up, and I at least at least when it comes to backups, I'm like really good at backing it up if something goes wrong. Um, I had a ton of just like fairly small mistakes. Um, I I, I don't think there are actually many like big mistakes. Um, I mean I mean me falling down on cruiser was probably the biggest mistake I made in that race. Se second biggest, probably, like... Maybe Tommy probably... Plus mess up, but... Not yeah. yeah. That, so that my, my backup is, like, kind of bad with Tommy Plus. I probably lost, like, 10 seconds or something. But after all... I, I had some, like, shaky gameplay and all these, like, small mistakes. And mm. I was, like... I was still 48 base going into Tippy. I was, like... Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I was like 30 seconds behind my PB, which is a 48.20 and didn't have the best tippy. So that run, that run could have gotten like a 48.40 or sub 48.40 with a really good tippy, but 
I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't clutch it out like last time, but it's like good enough to take the W. Yeah. Exactly. You also right have Joe Rindon in the call, though. I don't want to leave him out. How are you feeling about that race? You know, it was actually on PB pace until the very end of TikTok clock. Yeah. I'm quite happy about it being on PB pace for that far. Uh, all I can really say about this run is too many ground pounds. <laughs> yep. Now, now, Punke, that routing decision was definitely a point of confusion in the booth. Can you kind of talk oh. about what made you decide to use that route? What, just like the semi-star route I did? Well, yeah, like you, you, got out, both, like uh, you got both HMC, uh, Toxic Maze, and the SL Reds without skipping anything in TTC. It's actually fine. No, it's uh, we, we miscounted in the commentary. Like, Pity pointed out, like, as we were going over it. But, like, yeah, just like the normal, like, CCM17 route from a while back. I guess we were saying, like, why not HMC late? Or, like, what were we planning on doing? I sort of... People, people always just question my route like they, they question my route as if it's like ridiculously unoptimal or something that I, I find it a little weird like everyone just seems to like just que question my route which i i think it's good for races because like it doesn't do double pillarless which is really safe for a race I, I honestly don't want to do double pillar lists in, in a race when I'm probably going to be nervous. That's the main reason I don't do double pillar lists. Yeah. Reason number two is because I'm playing a Japanese version. So, like, it's just kind of awkward to do um, SSL secrets, I guess. And there's a, a chance for a sound glitch. And uh, that makes sense. Also, if you, like, screw up pillar lists one time or get, like, a medium bomb one time, it doesn't save any time. So, I just, like, I, I don't want to do it and races like when i when i when i race 70 star i just want to do pillar list once and like get it over with that's fair yeah. just rip that band-aid off and get it done and i mean so I do have to uh, say like we were only questioning it just because it was unusual like it, it just we wanted to kind of understand uh where you're coming from with it it I wasn't was, that we thought it was wrong i was yeah. the last thing bef before we go how do you feel about playing cheese in your next round you know the the spicy one coming up uh if i if i lose again to cheese in tournament and he plays ridiculously well i i will come to the conclu conclusion that tournament cheese is too powerful because like, i i swear every time i race him in the tournament he just plays really well like there is a 70 star tournament like quite a while ago possibly around a year ago at this point hard to say he 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 just he just busts out like a casual like forty eight forty something or whatever, and, you, and just like I also I also think it's like really really silly and kind of dumb that I'm playing him in round two. I don't I don't agree with this seating. Like I kind of already complain about it, but there's nothing I can really do. I just have to like hopefully don't let the the nerves just like consume me. And I can play well and pop them. That's all you can really hope for. Well, all right. I'm going to have to cut this interview a tad short uh, so that we can stay on schedule. But to both of you, great race. Especially congrats to Joe Random for that PB pace all the way up to TTC. And yeah, definitely looking forward to that Punk K versus Cheese, the race of the Titans. Don't go away, guys. We've got another SMO any percent race after this. Real quick, another shout out to Vi.gg, the sponsor of this tournament, the SMO Any% Percent Tournament, and finally the Super Metroid Any% Percent Tournament. Go check them out with exclamation point bet. Again, I am Electric, and my co-commentator here has been Bedronis. Thanks so much, Bedro, especially for stepping up with such short notice. Yeah, of course. And like I said, stick around. We got more races for you. And with that, we're going to go into interview.